Welcome back to episode 3, Piking for Beginners, and today is all going to be about fish care, hopefully landing <laughs> your pike, getting it safely up on your hooking station, unhooking it safely, getting your trophy shot, and then returning it safely. That's all it's about today, well hopefully we're going to catch a few pike, and we're going to show you exactly how to land them, hopefully outplay them successfully, get them up on that bank, I'll show you exactly how I go about unhooking them, I'll show you all your mount hooking station, getting the fish back safely with the minimum amount of time and the minimum amount of fuss. You know the title says on, it does what it says on the tin, Piking for beginners, so landing, unhooking, trophy shot, back in the water safe and sound. That's what we're going to be doing today. So here's my unhooking station. Large beanie mat and a smaller one. Nice big sling. Got my scales there, unhooking tools there. Something to dry my hands with there. You want everything organised. I always get me unhooking station. That's the first thing I set up. You get that organised. Even if you have a pike as soon as you cast in, you're ready. You're up and running. You're ready to go. Whenever I'm fishing, I always fish with multiple nets. I have a fox predator. Spoon shaped net, that's a um, rubberized mesh. Ideal if you're using trebles. You know, they really are hook friendly. You don't get all that mesh tangled up and hooked up and destroyed. They're really great. I mean, it's a good enough, that's a good enough net. I've had fish, 20 pound fish in that net, no problem. If I get any livey jacks or anything like that, that's my go-to net. And then my second net. Yep, oh, you, you always have two nets. As I said in my first video, grab a 42 inch. Obviously you don't want to go out laying out. I mean, rubberized nets are very expensive. A net like that, not this one particular one, this is a tracker, but you can get, you know, from the cheaper manufacturers, the NGTs and think people like that, you can get a 42 inch landing net plus handle for under 20 quid. And I'll use that for the bigger fish, you know, 20 plus. Anything I catch over 20, go. I use that net. The reason I don't use it all the time is then you'll find if you're using trebles is you can quite easily have a trailing treble catch onto that mesh now all of a sudden you've got a big deep net and a fish is hooked up at the top of the net and it's you know it's dangling there it'll rip the it'll rip your net to pieces and even worst case scenario could damage the fish's mouth so I tend to use these for the bigger ones, the rubberized specialty ones, obviously they're very expensive. So what I would advise is get yourself a cheap one. It don't matter if you it doesn't matter if the mesh breaks. I mean I'll go through a cheap one once a season. But you do need those big nets. So I always have two nets. One for the lively jacks and smaller fish up to mid doubles. Anything I think there's 20 or plus or more, I'll use that net. Here are just a few examples of me playing fish. Exactly, I'll tell you exactly what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. 
fishing close in here so I'm not standing up higher on the horizon to spook the fish don't want them darting away and you'll notice as the fish is being eased over the net then I use the elevation of the rod to direct the fish to exactly where I want it to go In this sequence you'll notice me tucking the butt of the rod under my forearm as the fish tries to exert pressure that's just that little movement allows me to apply counter pressure without using too much force and here again once in this sequence as before, I'm keeping very low to the horizon because I'm fishing close in. But very early in playing the fish, I get that landing net in position to my left hand so I know exactly where it is when it comes to gliding that fish over the net. Once again in this sequence you can see from behind that I get the net in position very early and what the slight difference in this one is the pike makes a last minute attempt to evade the net and veers off to the right and I don't panic I just lower the rod apply some side pressure and gently ease it back towards the net. Here in this sequence you can see I do everything completely different. I'm fishing at distance so immediately I'm in a standing position to play the fish so I can exert as much pressure from a distance as possible. You want a tight line between the tip of your rod and that fish when you're fishing at distance. When I do get it close in it makes an escape route for my left hand two rods that's when you've got to exert some pressure. You don't want your pike running through other lines. That causes all sorts of problems. So there are times when you have to exert some pressure. another one played at distance you can see immediately I'm in the upright position you can see the tip of the rod pumping where the fish is applying some pressure get the net down not too early but I get the net down well before it's anywhere close to being landed and you can see the elevation of the rod rather than trying to reel it into the net glide it into the net We will run your fingers up to the chin. That's how quick and easy they come out. So gently run a couple of fingers up to the pike's jaw. Lift the head slightly. Slight pressure and the mouth will open automatic and you can just Put them unhooking tools in and take the hooks out. You can see by lifting the fish, I'm holding it one hand under the chin, chinning it just like you do when you're unhooking, and the other hand is supporting the weight of the fish at the bottom. It's really safe, it's really comfortable for the fish, and you're in total control. Notice when I put the pike face on, 
my hand position for the chin. Let's see how easy it is to lift from the chin with this one. And all that's left to do is return your catch safely back to the water. The principle's the same, whether it's a large sling like mine or a landing net. Hold the fish there as long as she needs. 30 seconds, 30 minutes, doesn't matter. She'll swim off when she's ready. There she goes, safe and sound. <laughs>